Assuming you don't live under a rock, you probably know that at 90 years old, actor William Shatner is the oldest person to now travel to space and cross the Kármán line. Shatner traveled over the West Texas desert aboard a rocket built by Blue Origin for space tourists like himself. He was in tears after this Blue Origin space flight. It was really moving to listen to his reaction. And with more on this whole experience, I wanted to talk to Jonathan McDowell. He is a Harvard astronomer and also my friend. And I know that he was interviewed by CNN and many other major news outlets about William Shatner going to space and just space tourism in general. So here we go. First of all, yeah. dude does not look 90 at all. I mean, seriously, he's in better shape than I am. And, <laughs> and you know, one of the interesting things about the Blue Origin launches is unlike the uh, Falcon 9s at, at Kennedy Space Center, yeah. there isn't an elevator to go up to the spaceship. They actually have to climb stairs. Oh, wow. I wonder if that's sort of deliberate. Like, if you can't climb the stairs, then you probably shouldn't be flying the rocket. Yeah. Um, I'm like, oh, I'm not sure I could even do the stairs, never mind uh, the rocket yeah. ride, right? I, I'm really happy for him. It, it, it's, uh, you know, the guy is an icon to all of us in the space business. Um, you know, positive or negative, depending on your take. But I, I, you know, I used to be in the camp of making fun of Shatner's acting, but uh, as I've as I, I've mellowed, and and I actually really like him now. So, um, uh, yeah, so it's great. It's it's a it was a great publicity stunt by Blue. Uh, yeah. And uh, but he clearly he clearly was very moved by the experience. It wasn't just Shatner on board. Um. There were there was a, a rep from Blue Origin, Audrey Powers, who I don't know personally, but is well known in the space community. Okay. She's like one of this younger generation of, of you know, she's not just, you know, a uh, an official from Blue Origin. She's someone that a lot of people, you know, know and love in the community. Right. right? And, um, you know, once you go a couple steps down from people like Elon that the whole world has heard of, there, there's this sort of community of space professionals that kind of know each other. And another one of them is one of the paying customers, Chris Bosheisen, uh, who was one of the founders of a company called Planet Labs, uh, which runs the first big CubeSat constellation. Oh, wow. And I've actually known Chris uh, for almost 10 years. Wow. Uh, I don't know him well, but, but yeah. uh, you know, I, I visited him and his colleagues in, in uh, San Francisco for their, uh, when they were, their startup was just getting going. Wow. And now they're like, now he can afford to fly on Blue Origin. So, yeah. um, <laughs> right. Doing well. uh, yeah, they, they're, they're doing well. So I'm really happy for Chris. And, and then the fourth passenger was some rich person that none of us have heard of before. Sorry. Mr. DeVries, but, <laughs> but, but the fact that three of the four people were people who the insiders in the space community know these people, right? Um, They're our family flying. And, and that was an interesting feeling for us. Right, right. Um, so uh, we feel about, you know, people like Chris and Audrey a bit in the way that the general public feels about Shatner flying. You know, at, while they were up there, there were 14 human beings in space in total. Uh, which is equaling the record set last month. Uh, and of the, those 14 people, actually, you know, the, so, so uh, uh, six were private citizens. And I think that's a record uh, because not only did we have, not only did we have the, um, uh, the Blue Origin 4, we had the Russian movie crew that's currently <laughs> shooting a movie on the space station with like, uh, you know, a, a proper movie director and a well-known Russian uh, actress. Uh, and, uh, you know, this is, I mean, Tom Cruise wanted to do this some time ago, but he hasn't got his act together to actually do it. These two actually got their act together to go and uh, take themselves and their film equipment up to the space wow. station to film a space movie on location. And, and so that's, you know, another indication that, I mean, it's not just the rich billionaires, right? It's, it's the, uh, um, 
it, space is becoming a place where private citizens and private businesses do their stuff. Right, right. Right. And, and so, so I think that's, you know, so we have inspiration just in the past couple months. So we've had the Virgin Galactic, we've had Blue Origin, but we've also had inspiration for, we've had the movie crew. Um, another really rich Japanese businessman is flying to the space station in a month or two. Right. Uh, and, and so the tempo, you know, we've had space tourists since the year 2000. Dennis Tito flew to the uh, space station in the year 2000 on the Russian uh, Soyuz. Um, uh, but the tempo is going up now. There's multiple choices, multiple price points. Uh, it's starting to be a real industry. I think that's the message. How cool is that? Yeah, no, it feels like a change. If you, and, and, you know, it's not a coincidence, right, that now the youngest and oldest person in space, both were, were these private citizens, right? Yeah. We started with, you know, Mercury and Vostok with all the astronauts and cosmonauts being, you know, late 20s, early 30s, white males <laughs> from a, a particular, you know, fighter pilots, that just very, very similar. Hard to tell some of them apart, to be honest. Uh, and uh, uh, and over the years, right, that that cadre of astronauts has become a lot more diverse. Right. But the private citizens that are flying are perhaps not financially more diverse, but but uh, uh, but you know, in terms of the the demographics, it really okay. does seem like. <clears throat> You're seeing a different, you know, different sets of people. Wally Funk on the previous Blue Origin flight, uh, and um, <coughs> uh, folks like Sarisha Bandler, uh, uh, flown as a staff member. Um, oh, and the, the the one other thing we have to say though, the caveat is that I think the orbital space mission, space tourism missions, are really you know doing well now. Mm -hmm. They're much more expensive. It's a smaller um, demographic. Uh, uh, it, we may see more of these film crew type things, right? It's, it's like, you've got to find use cases, business cases where spending uh, 50 million, a hundred million dollars isn't going to break your budget. Right. So, you know, big ass movie is, is, uh, uh, is an obvious, uh, use case for that that that's just so crazy to think that they're actually filming a movie on location like i can't wait to see it you know yeah it's going to be interesting how much they're gonna uh is actually going to be the on location part we'll see but uh um i feel like me just like being a journalist and having to shoot and write and edit my own stuff every day i'd be so nervous like you know, that something was going to go wrong with the equipment. You can't, you can't come back later and, <laughs> and no. do makeups, right? No. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Sure everything's working. Well, maybe, uh, you know, maybe you can persuade Elon to send you up on an early Starship <laughs> flight and do a, do a blog from, from oh, Orbit. Oh, how cool. Um, but, but what I was going to say is the caveat is that's the orbital stuff. The suborbital stuff, Blue Origin has now flown a total of three actual paying passengers. Right. Right. It's, it's flown, you know, like eight people, but only three of them paid money. How right? much per, how much per person? It's unclear, but we're thinking in the 300 to $400,000 range. Cheap. Yeah. Pocket money. <laughs> and, and Virgin Galactic, right. Hasn't flown any paying passengers, right. Everyone on the Virgin Galactic flight in July was uh, a, a, a Virgin staff member. Mm -hmm. Being, I mean, so I guess, you know, you can argue Branson himself paid because he paid for the whole program, but that's right. not my point. Uh, so, so it's not clear to me. I mean, they both, both companies are talking about how they have these long backlogs of tourists who want to fly. Where are they? Because they're not flying them. They're flying people like Audrey Powers or people like Bill Shatner who got comped. Yeah right? Not the people who actually uh, shelled out the money. Interesting. And, and so I think, you know, maybe there's some logistical thing that, yeah, they're just waiting for the first couple of flights and now they're going to 
tick it off and go, okay, now we're going to start going through the backlog. But right. it's, it's puzzling me a bit. It's like, all right, do they, do they really have this, this large number of clients that are raring to go right. or not? And where are they? So, so that's, I think over the next few months, uh, what we're going to see on this suborbital, uh, on the blue and the Virgin missions. I mean, Virgin actually just stood down for the next few months to do some upgrades to their spacecraft. Uh, so they've been having a lot of, pro I, I, you know, I, uh, they, it's not looking good on the Virgin Galactic side. I, I really like those guys, but, but they're, it's, it's unclear when they're really going to get going. Uh, Blue at least is flying and they're flying, yeah. paying passengers, uh, but not that many yet. So, so let's see when is NS-19? When is, uh, you know, who are they going to fly on that? Are they going to fly four paying passengers? Or are they going to fill it out again with uh, Blue Origin staff and and comped famous people? So, at what point will this be accessible to the normal layman? The normal, not insanely rich person. Yeah. <sighs> not in my lifetime, I fear. You really think? <laughs> Um, but then, uh, you know, uh, in your lifetime, though, uh, maybe, uh, I mean, it, it's, it's going to be a long time before it's <laughs> cheap enough. I mean, I don't know. What, what's your price point, Eliana? What would you be prepared to pay for, let's say, for suborbital, because that's going to be cheaper for, for, for a, you know, three or four minutes of weightlessness and the, the bragging rights to say you've been in space? Oh, my gosh. I I'm curious at what point is it going to be like 10 grand? Yeah, I, that, that feels about the right number to me, right? Yeah. I, I would say even, you know, even 20 grand, I might, right. I might pay 20 grand. You know, I can't afford 100 grand, right? But, but, ten, but in the tens of, low tens of grand, of thousand dollars, you know, that, that feels to me like maybe you wouldn't put 20 grand, but, you know, insane space cadets like me yeah. might go mortgage space flight <laughs> <laughs> and, and so uh you know and and so uh and so i think if they can bring it down to maybe even thirty thousand or something like that which is like a factor of 10 down from what it is now right so they're about a factor of 10 away from getting a whole lot of crazy space cadets signing up is that like a bucket list thing for you? It used to be. Yeah. I I think I think it may be too late for me now. I am not sure that my health would would. Uh, I I'm not as healthy as Shatner, uh, and and so I I you know hypertension and things like that. I don't know how that would play out. So we'll see. But maybe I mean that's one of the things that they're clearly trying to do by flying people like Shatner. Right. Is 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 make people like me think. Oh, you don't have to be, you know, super, you don't have to be Eliana Sheriff. You don't have to be rock climbing, super jock, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you can be overweight old slob guy <laughs> who's a little past it. Right. And, and so, so, you know, maybe, maybe I'm being too timid and it's, it's, I would be fine on, on that, on that kind of flight.